Wonderful, excellent. Thank you so much, Sarab. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. It is so great to be here with you today. Such an honor. Um, and as Sarab said, it's so wonderful to see all of the, uh, the diversity, the students from all over the world joining us here today. Thank you so much. So to begin, uh, I would like to introduce the Associate Dean for the Norton Wolf School of Aviation Technology, Mr. Larry Weir. And um, Larry will be able to share with you uh, his vast experience within the school um, later on in the presentation, but it's an honor to introduce you, Larry, and um, look forward to hearing from you uh, in just a few minutes. Um, and I'll introduce myself. My name is Tracy Davies and I am the program manager within, within the school. Um, and it is really a true honor to, to get to be within the Norton Wolf School of Aviation Technology each day. The professors, the staff, the team, there's just an unbelievable dedication uh, to aerospace excellence, um, bringing in all of the various um, experience and expertise from the industry, and are just a real dedication to students learning what you need when you're going out into industry and to be the very best you can be. Um, so I'm really looking forward to sharing this information with you um, and uh, afterwards also answering any questions. So to begin with, um, I will just move on to the next slide. Um, I'm going to be uh, starting with um, going through the aircraft maintenance program. So I saw through the chat box, there are some of you that are um, interested or coming in September for this program. So this is one of our two year diplomas. Um, so just giving you some more information about the aircraft maintenance program. Um, you know, we find many of our students that come into the program um, have already a lot of experience or awareness just of, you know, what um, employers and industry are looking for um, once students graduate. Um, but, you know, some of the exciting um, areas that you'll study, aircraft systems, um, and this is systems that are used in general aviation, in corporate, charter transports, aircraft, helicopters, so you're able to get a wide spectrum of experience. Um, and, you know, as always, you're going to be really um, honing your skills, um, both with computer and electronic system skills. Um, and then, you know, we, we do hear feedback from students, you know, just the additional courses that help to make up the, the full breadth and depth of this program. You know, you'll be studying propellers, um, aviation re uh, regulations, and wing aerodynamics. Um, so again, just those are some of the main overview um, information and details about this two-year diploma. Um, so when you graduate, again, very important information. I know many of you, um, this, is, this is important. These are important details. You will be prepared for a career uh, with both Canadian and international aircraft maintenance and aircraft manufacturing organizations. So you're poised to have the experience ready um, to move into a role where you are truly going to be contributing to an organization. Um, and very important information, you'll be able to pursue your license um, in either fixed wing or rotary wing aircraft. Um, that's either in the M1 or the M2 categories. Um, and if you graduate or so are qualified graduates of this two-year diploma, you will receive 1,800 hours um, that will be added to your logbook. Um, and that is towards the required 4,800 hours of experience that's required before you take your Transport Canada exam. So, um, you know, we hear from students, it's excellent. Those two years of studying, you're able to accumulate 1,800 hours of your required 4,800 hours. Um, so just very important details and again if you have any questions about that um, we can move into some um, any further details. The second two-year diploma that um, I wanted to share information with you about today is our avionics maintenance um, program. Uh, another excellent two-year diploma and I saw that some of you are also coming to the Norton Wolf School of Aviation Technology for Avionics. Again, a two-year diploma um, and with this Transport Canada approved program, um, 
aviation um, technician for avionics, um, you really will become a vital uh, member of the team because of your specialized and highly honed skills um, that you may be coming in with some experience. You may not have any experience at all. So we are, are really committed to taking all of our students through all of the requirements of the Transport Canada um, learnings that are going to be mandatory for you to not only have no working knowledge, but true awareness um, within the industry. Um, so you'll be covering all of the aspects of aircraft avionics systems, um, whether you're um, learning about those for general aviation, again, corporate, charter transport, aircraft, helicopters. So just really um, the, the full spectrum of, of the aerospace industry. So just within avionics, um, the just some more facts. Um, we can move forward. Then some more facts about avionics. Um, you know, as we had, you know, what we we really um, work with our professors um, within the school to really ensure that our students have that cutting edge um, advantage um, with your computer and electronic systems and all of the courses that you're studying. Um, but really, just to ensure that you're prepared uh, for your career within the Canadian and international avionics field. Um, and you know, just a just a brief note too, um, in that video that Sarab had shared, you know, you're able to actually to see a good number of the professors that we have within the Norton Wolf School of Aviation Technology. And these are professors that are truly dedicated. So you, you can actually feel their dedication as they're sharing the information, making sure that you're understanding the concepts. And um, all of these individuals have worked within the industry. They know the, the complexities, they know the, the important pieces that are required. Um, for, really for all aspects of an individual when they're moving into the aerospace field. So um, we are really fortunate to have, have brought in um, a truly qualified but extremely dedicated team. And many of you will know um, when you're dedicated to something, um, it's, it's amazing how, how much you're able to pass on your, um, your passion your, um, and your dedication to a field. Um, so again, similar to our, uh, for both of our two-year diplomas, um, when you graduate um, from avionics um, successfully, you will receive 1,800 hours um, that is um, part, that will move towards your 4,800 required hours before you take your Transport Canada exam. So again, we, we can answer any questions, but that is, that is um, what many students are, um, you know, very grateful. Um, they put in the time during their two-year diploma um, to ensure that all of these hours are part of their logbook. So those 18 hours while you are studying um, is what is um, part of your for required 4,800 hours. So a, a really important point to, to bring forth. Um, and then what we also have is aviation technology, our aircraft maintenance and avionics program. So this is a three-year advanced diploma. So the previous two programs were two-year diplomas. This is a three-year advanced diploma. Um, and this is for students um, that are looking to have the full breadth of information um, and all of the technology provided to them, both in uh, maintenance and avionics. Um, and so this, this truly prepares you uh, to have the knowledge and skills that you are required, um, whether in aircraft maintenance or, or avionics maintenance. So when you're moving into becoming an aviation leader, um, having both the maintenance and the avionics background um, is excellent. So it's, a th it's three years um, and you are really going to be dedicated. But as you, as you can see, the, the students, um, you know, once they're in, in the hangar and learning with our professors um, and with fellow students, um, it just eat your skills just build each week um, and your experience and it just allows you to to graduate um, really with what the the skills and information that industry needs and that Transport Canada requires you have. Um, so again, just if you are wondering about some of the, the courses and the general program information for this three-year advanced diploma, um, you know, again, you are uh, learning all of the systems that you are required to know, whether in general aviation, 
corporate charter. Um, and so this, uh, again, program covers many of the courses that um, you will be, you're, you're taking them from both avionics and maintenance, so service, repair, maintenance of aircraft. Um, you're learning the electrical and the electronic systems, um, your communication and your navigation and data systems. So for many of you, I know that um, all of this information, all this language is second nature to you. This is um, already something that you are so interested in, passionate about, may already have experience. But this is just to help you understand that we you know, truly go from A to Z to provide the information you need to be truly prepared um, and a Transport Canada approved. Just upon graduation of this three-year advanced diploma, just some important notes, um, important information to provide to you. Um, you'll be eligible to pursue either an M or an E category license um, within the aviation industry. So that is a very important point for you to know. Um, and because you'll be studying three years, um, with this advanced diploma, you will accumulate 2,700 hours um, towards your required 4,800 hours before you can write your Transport Canada exam. Um, so again, you know, from many students that we, you know, that, that have gone through this program, this, this is really important, you know, to, to be able to accumulate this number of hours is excellent while you are learning your required information. So, as you can imagine, um, you know, as a graduate, you, you have even greater job prospects um, with having that avionics and maintenance background of taking while taking this three year advanced diploma. And so at this point, I'm going to turn the presentation uh, over again to our Associate Dean, Larry Weir. Just an honor to, to have Larry here, and um, I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Larry. Well, thank you, Tracy. Um, that was a wonderful uh, presentation. And uh, every time I hear you speak, I, I, I learn more things about our school. So thank you so much. Um, and welcome, everyone. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Um, and welcome to the Norton Wolf School of Aviation Technology. So the first program that I want to talk about is one that we're very uh, excited about. Um, not that we're not excited about all of our programs, but we're excited in particular about the Aircraft Structural Repair Technician One Year Ontario College Certificate Program because this will be our first year uh, running it. It has been uh, run for a number of years in our hangar uh, by another college and for a number of reasons um, we've, we've now adopted this program and uh, have built upon their wonderful successes and um, have modernized it, enhanced it and added a number of training, uh, new training tools and um, so we're going to be working now with the Aircraft Structural Repair Technician Program um, or an S license. So this program, you've already heard about the M and the E, which are focused on the mechanical and the electronics portion of it. Uh, structures is precisely that. You're looking at fuselages, uh, you're looking at the internal framework, you're looking at glassware, uh, all of those components that are external and physical to the aircraft. It's very, very hands-on, it's very project-based. But the exciting part about, about the Aircraft Structural Repair Technician Program is that it's not 100% focused on maintenance, repair, and overhaul. Um, it also prepares people for uh, graduates for a, a, an exciting career in the manufacturing sector um, because you, you'll be introduced not only to some of the traditional uh, materials that are used in the construction of, of aircraft, um, but you'll also have some introductions into the, um, into the more cutting edge and advanced materials of of composite materials, et cetera, that are used in, in current airframes. Um, starting next fall, we'll have a one-year advanced, or one-year grad certificate, uh, which is really a complementary program to the advanced, to the aircraft structural, I'm sorry, aircraft structural repair technician program, um, where you'll learn uh, about all new uh, emerging technologies in aircraft construction. So we've talked about what, what you gain um, as far as hours towards Transport Canada on the M and the E programs. 
Um, so in that this is a one-year program, you'll receive 900 hours towards the 4,800 hours of experience requirements. Now, I'd like to expand on that a little bit. So Transport Canada, uh, before they allow you to write um, your Transport Canada uh, Aircraft Maintenance Engineering license, requires 4,800 hours of experience. That 4,800 hours of experience um, will be a combination of those hours that you'll earn while you're here working at, at Fanshawe. And then when you enter the industry, uh, working under the, the supervision of a licensed aircraft maintenance engineer. There is a logbook that's associated with it. And you have to sign off on a, a long, and reason, it, it's really quite an exhaustive and uh, list of, of activities that you have to be able to complete. Um, as well as doing the 4,800 hours. At the end of the, the 4,800 hours and the uh, completion of the list of activities, then you're eligible to write uh, the Transport Canada exam. Now, you'll see on the slide that it says qualified graduates. And, and what, I would, what I would say is that qualified graduates um, are, are not just the individuals who have graduated the Fanshawe program. Um, to receive that, Transport Canada demands attendance. How you get 900 hours um, towards the 4,800 hours is through 95% attendance, 70% uh, on theory, and 70% um, on maintenance, uh, or rather uh, practical uh, lab work. And, and so, through, the, through attendance, um, that verifies to Transport Canada uh, that you've actually been there for all of those hours. And that's how that you would earn 900 hours uh, in that one year. So the very exciting portion about this, this new program um, is that, as I mentioned, it will in fact prepare you uh, for both Canadian international uh, companies, both in the aircraft maintenance um, and repair, uh, the, or MRO as we call it, maintenance, repair, and overhaul, but also the tremendously exciting area of aircraft manufacturing. So I saw initially when a number of you were identifying uh, you know, what program that you were going to be attending, um, that a number of the folks who have signed on today are going to be coming for our applied aerospace manufacturing. This is an ex another exciting program that we have. It's a one-year college graduation certificate. And it brings people in and really speaks, you know, to the, the heart of aerospace manufacturing. It, it brings you in um, and teaches you the whole new language of aerospace industry. Our experts and, and career professionals that we have come to us from industry and, and um, they are engineers working in the field today um, and, and continue to work there. So when they come in and, and they talk to you about constant process of improvement, uh, Lean Six Sigma, uh, aerospace industry, AS 9100, all of these things are going to take you um, from your own professional education that you have and lift you into uh, to, uh, to a point where you're gonna be very comfortable working on the floor um, in, the air, in the aircraft maintenance, but also in the aircraft manufacturing sectors. It's, it's a pretty exciting, very hands-on um, year where all of our students um, have tremendous, tremendous feedback um, at, at what, uh, you know, how hands-on it is and, and, and the, their introduction to the, this, is exciting, this exciting uh, aspect of aircraft manufacturing. So um, with that, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the Norton Wolf School of Aviation Technology. Um, we're uniquely situated at the London International Airport. Um, we're in a 80,000 square foot hangar, which has immediate access to the International uh, Airport right on the runway. We are physically situated uh, immediately adjacent to the, the terminal. So for those of you who uh, arrive in London uh, by aircraft, uh, the very first thing you'll see when you walk out the, the door of, of the aircraft terminal or the airport terminal 
immediately to your left is the, your new college uh, campus site. It's, uh, it, it's a very exciting facility and which we're spending a lot of effort making it more so. Uh, as we speak, uh, we're investing over $6 million in renovations um, and modernizing and enhancing um, the facility uh, to significantly improve your education experience. Um, we're all very, very excited about the changes and improvements that we're, we're making um, in an already uh, impressive facility. Inside the, the, the hangar, and you'll have seen this in the video, um, we have quite a fleet of aircraft and they are the full range from general aviation and sport aircraft. Um, we have home builds, we have the full range of Pipers and Cessnas and Diamond aircraft, and they run all the way through to Canadian uh, the Havilland products and uh, we have the, 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 uh, the Falcon fan jet. And, and then we have a 727 freighter out on the ramp that we do an awful lot of work on. So it's pretty exciting range of hands-on uh, work that everyone has um, within, the, within the hangar. But add to that, uh, we have a virtual maintenance trainer, which is a wonderful simulator that teaches electronic systems and, and uh, problem shooting within the, within the aircraft. Um, and we have a number of large components of, of various aircraft on work stands, just as you would discover and experience if you were working with in, in industry in a hangar. So it, it's a wonderful facility um, and we feel particularly fortunate um, to, to work there every day. Our programs um, aren't all just in a hangar. And, and you know, we work in the hangar, we work in the classrooms and, and, and I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, and we work out on the ramp but in between semesters, uh, we have outstanding relationships with a, a wide variety of uh, aircraft companies that are in maintenance, repair, and overhaul, that are in the manufacturing sector, that are in the airline transport industry. And in those relationships, um, for those of you who are in co-op offerings, um, there are some tremendous uh, opportunities to go, to go and to gain firsthand experience in between semesters. And we're very excited about the support um, that we have from the wide variety of, of companies. And that, that number of companies is, is growing daily. So, um, so please, um, when, you, when you get here, pursue the co-op as much as you can. Um, Ms. Jennifer Lee is our, is our co-op uh, coordinator um, and she brings such a, a wealth of experience and, and capability in, in, uh, in teaching you everything from resume writing um, to help, helping you with interviews and, and getting you into situations where you'll be working on the floor in, in various co-op situations. So um, I noticed on one of the, the questions that, that came up uh, that, that and, and I knew that people would be interested in, in how the, the Norton Wolf School of Aviation Technology uh, and indeed Fanshawe College uh, in its entirety, how we're adapting um, to the, uh, the, the uh, COVID-19 reality. So first, um, as, as Tracy so accurately stated, uh, um, our school, our faculty um, is comprised of all 100% industry professionals. Every one of, of our professors uh, comes to us from, uh, you know, very, very strong career positions, either in major and uh, airline, airlines um, or manufacturing sectors, um, renovation uh, companies that have that taken rebuild airplanes to maintenance, repair and overhaul. They're all here as, as professors genuinely and keenly interested and committed to sharing their life experiences with you um, and, and preparing you for, for what it will be an exciting career in, in aviation. So with that keenness, um, we've been able to move towards a, a hybrid um, type of delivery process. So by that, what I'm referring to is that we'll be able to offer um, during the, the, uh, the, the COVID-19 
pandemic stress period, uh, we'll be able to offer many of our programs will be online um, and, and you'll, you'll learn more about that when you arrive. Um, but we, we have significant experience and, and Fanshawe has been delivering the online uh, education experience for many, many years. So uh, we have some tremendous experience in that and some great technology that will support that. But what makes it uniquely uh, interesting for those of us at the, at, in the aviation industry um, and, and why so many of you come um, to colleges to learn these programs is the opportunity that you'll all have for actual hands-on. So even though that you'll be studying um, during the COVID-19 period online and, and picking up an awful lot of that material, you'll be coming into the hangar itself, um, you know, and we'll be acknowledging social distancing, we'll be acknowledging all of the COVID-19 uh, required hygiene protocols, and you'll come into the hangar uh, in a reduced uh, footprint, and you'll be able to uh, engage the faculty one-on-one uh, -on -one, um, and, and, and collectively, and, and that's where you'll be doing your exams. But that's also where you'll be able to go out on the hangar floor and, you'll, and into the labs and do all of your practical hands-on uh, uh, and, and the exciting part of the course, the hands-on portion of, of, of your studies. Um, so uh, that pretty much wraps up the, the COVID update. Um, if you have other questions on it, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy to, uh, to respond to those. And now I'd like to take a couple of minutes and talk to you about um, our brand new program that's starting this fall, um, and that's our Commercial Aviation and Flight Leadership Program. This is a three-year advanced diploma. Um, it's, it's been many years in the making and, and we are absolutely excited to be able to, um, to include it in our lineup of, of uh, award-winning programs. Graduates of this three-year advanced diploma aren't just going to come out of it as commercial pilots. Um, they are going to be studying project management, uh, a wide variety of aviation-focused management and, and and operations courses. Um, and by doing so, our graduates will be ideally uh, situated and ideally placed to become the future leaders in the aviation industry. You know, prior to COVID-19, we saw uh, both Boeing and Airbus uh, released major um, studies showing that over 800,000 positions uh, around the world that are going to be open uh, within the next 20 years in the aviation industry. About 70% of those positions, the studies show, um, are directly related to uh, what some of us would call the gray wave, uh, which is the retirement of a number of people who are in the latter part of their, of their 50s and in their 60s and are approaching retirement. The exciting part about that, for those of you who are entering the aviation industry, um, is that those people, regardless of, the, of all of the news that you've been reading about the pressures on the aviation industry globally, uh, those people are going to move on and retire, and those positions will become vacant, regardless of what's going on uh, under the pressures of COVID-19. So it's, it remains, the aviation industry that is, remains an exciting opportunity uh, it, it remains a, a professional field that will have a, a long and, and, and a tremendous potential, um, regardless of, of how it restructures and comes out on the other side of COVID-19. So in this three-year program, uh, you'll study safety management systems, um, Canadian air regulations, and all of the, the, the subjects that you see on the screen. But the exciting portion of it is you'll also learn to fly in very modern aircraft. Um, we have a tremendous partnership with Diamond uh, Flight Center of, of Canada um, because we are uniquely uh, situated in, uh, on one side of our hangar is the Diamond Aircraft Manufacturing Facility um, and on the other side is the Diamond Flight Center uh, on the other side of the terminal. So nowhere else in the world uh, will you find this lineup where you have an education facility supported by both the manufacturer and the manufacturer's flying center. 
Um, so we have we, we built a, a world class partnership. Um, you'll be able to you'll be flying on on new and like new cutting edge technology aircraft um, that will always have you know the highest levels of maintenance because they're supported directly from the factory. In addition to flying on those modern aircraft, of course, you'll be gaining experience in those brand new classrooms and in the hangar uh, that we I talked about previously as a result of the significant renovation that we're having uh, in the hangar as we speak. Diamond not only builds airplanes, but they build their own very type specific simulators for those aircraft. So when you come and you fly on, on these brand new Garmin supported uh, and, and high end instrument uh, air, airplanes, you'll be able to, to amass significant number of hours in the simulators with those very type specific uh, pieces of equipment on board. So I mentioned um, we have a professional pilot program partnership with Diamond Flight Center of London. Um, this company has been around for a, for a significant number of years and has partnered uh, with a number of other uh, education in, institutions over the years, and they've honed um, their, their skill sets. And so uh, we're very excited to be in partnership with them. Um, and in future discussions that we have, uh, for those of you who are interested in, in this program, um, I'll be very excited to introduce to you in, in, in a future uh, presentation, uh, representatives of, of Diamond Flight Center as well, who will be able to join us then uh, and talk to us. So uh, for that program, there's a number of things that you have to remember. Uh, you can take the program without, um, without uh, studying the, the pilot program um, and pursue a career in, in aviation maintenance and operations. Um, but we feel that, that, that the core uh, remains the professional pilot program. The admissions requirements uh, are not onerous. You, you require a high school graduation. Um, you will have to pass a, uh, an aviation language proficiency test if English is not your first language. We recommend that for those of you who have not flown previously, uh, that you take uh, a, uh, an introductory flight on a, on a light aircraft and so that you have some uh, familiarity and understand what it is that you're about to experience. In Canada, um, as, as part of Transport Canada's requirements, uh, which I previously mentioned was the English language proficiency, but it also includes a category one aviation medical. You'll have found, for those of you who are pursuing this program, um, that that's as a result of COVID-19, is a challenging thing to acquire right now, um, don't worry about it. When you arrive, we'll look after that. We'll get you set up for that. You will have time. Uh, ideally, we would have preferred for everyone to have had that upon arrival, um, but the realities of, of COVID-19 have made that uh, difficult, if not impossible. So it, it's, it's not an issue for us. We'll, we'll get you through that system uh, when you get here. Um, and that is it for that slide. So with that, um, again, I thank you very much, Sarab, for giving us this opportunity uh, to introduce to uh, our, our viewers today the Norton Wolf School of Aviation Technology. Um, I look forward to seeing uh, each and every one of you uh, when you arrive. Um, thank you very much, Tracy, for, for your excellent support and, and work this morning. And over to you, Sarab. Awesome, thank you so much, uh, Larry and Tracy for wonderful information to our audience this morning. Uh, a couple of uh, points I have for students is, uh, one, your question should be through the Q&A. If raising your hand, I would not be uh, looking at that for now. So please put in your questions through the Q&A. I do have a point uh, uh, like about COVID-19 and Fancho's announcement over this week about COVID-19. I just want to reiterate that all applicants for fall uh, got that email. Uh, Fanshaw has decided to move um, uh, along with most of our programs uh, for fall 2020. So that is fantastic news. Of course, it will be done in different formats uh, because face-to-face -face, um, would not be possible in every case. However, Fanshaw's programs, some would be online, some would be in a blended uh, 
face-to-face -face format. Those details will be shared with students by May 28th. That's what Pancho has committed to. So there is forthcoming news on that as well. There were only um, a handful of programs which were suspended for fall 2020 because that was not uh, possible. Uh, so students who uh, got that email, like who were in those programs, have already received that email over the last 48 hours. Uh, but the great news is that our professors and uh, our le academic leadership team is prepared to welcome Fanshawe students um, from wherever in Canada. Immigration uh, has also clarified that you can do up to 50% of your program out of Canada. Uh, that, is, uh, that was a great clarification from the ministry as well. That says that uh, actually tells students that your postgraduate work permit is not compromised by studying out of Canada online with Fanshawe. So that is great, great news for students who want to continue their education with Fanshawe. And doing this online, um, it, it might not be what you were looking for. Uh, however, it might be a great starting point for you. Um, there are advantages that students get while studying online, even though initially you would have to um, get into a schedule, get used to the online tools and everything. But the, the online tools that uh, our division shared today, there are these tools available and there are many more supports available for students. We will be doing detailed online education seminars as well in the coming weeks. Uh, and we will share with students how uh, learning online happens at Fanshawe as well. So there'll be much more clarification coming as well. But I saw multiple questions coming about what will happen to this program uh, or that program. So uh, as I said, uh, almost all programs are running uh, for fall 2020. They'll be in different formats, of course. You will get a specific email about your program by May 28th. With that, um, uh, there are, of course, multiple questions that have come in. Uh, I I'm going to take a couple of questions that I see. Um, Larry, um, the students are always asking, how can they prepare themselves? Uh, better for starting their program this fall. So for example, uh, for commercial flight, you did share that doing that introductory flight is, is a great tool to prepare yourself. Uh, but are there others for like aviation, uh, so aircraft maintenance, uh, aviation avionics maintenance, our uh, most popular programs, uh, aerospace manufacturing, a very popular program. Are there things that students can do even before they start fall uh, to prepare themselves better for the program? That's a great question. Thanks, Saurabh. So uh, there absolutely is. For many years, we've talked about how uh, a lot of what we do in aircraft maintenance um, and in, in flight is very math focused. Um, I, I would like to spend a couple of minutes debunking that. Um, although there, there are requirements to, um, to have a solid foundation in math, um, it, it's really no more than that. You, you do need to have those high school math skills. Um, and for anyone who has been a little bit removed from, from the classroom, um, spending a little bit of time uh, refreshing and brushing up on some of those skills, uh, you know, would, would go a long way. But I would also uh, say that in, in, if you have time, um, the internet is a wonderful place and a great resource uh, for you to, to brush up on on some, on some great skills that they have when they talk about general aviation. Um, the understanding of things like basic aerodynamics and, and, and uh, uh, how aircraft work, um, how airports work, a, a lot of that is available in, in, in a very basic form out there. And, and uh, no time is wasted uh, in brushing up on some of that information. Awesome, thank you, Larry. Uh, I'm just looking at uh, other programs as well. So um, there are questions coming in around the placement. Um, and placement is a term that a lot of international students do use because, uh, but they're really trying to understand the employment opportunities. And you did speak about uh, the uh, Boeing's um, uh, report and things like that. But could you just reiterate that for a couple of minutes, Larry, the employment opportunities in the field of aviation? Sure, uh, with pleasure. So. Around the world, and, and by, by uh, geographic region, um, it remains the same. It doesn't matter if, if you're in the Pacific Rim, if you're in the Middle East, or if you're in Africa, uh, South America, North America, 
every region of the globe um, has a huge and burgeoning uh, aerospace industry um, for a number of reasons, not the least of which was there was the travel sector. Uh, air freight is, is, a ma is a major industry. Um, but aircraft manufacturing has, has diversified and, and it's, it's around the world now. So, and, and wherever you fly, you absolutely require uh, maintenance, repair and overhaul. So it's, it's really no longer, you know, uh, two or three major uh, geographic regions that have strong uh, aviation and aerospace uh, industries. It, it is a global industry. Prior to uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, the, uh, the industry every year um, would release a, uh, a projection over the next two decades. Those projections covered uh, uh, the flight attendants or flight services. They, they would cover specifically all the aircraft maintenance engineer and technicians requirements, and they would, uh, would cover uh, individually the, the pilot demand. So between those three, uh, you would see that there was a huge demand uh, around the world for all three of those different areas. But I'll focus on the pilots and the aircraft maintenance engineers or technicians for a moment. So as I mentioned, the demand is high. Um, and so we're looking at, at uh, you know, overhaul, overall about 800,000 jobs over, over the next 20 years. Um, in certain sectors, those pressures are, are somewhat different. In, the, uh, in North America and in Europe, um, the, uh, you know, over 200,000 in North America alone, uh, pilots over the, over the next 20 years, 70% um, of those are driven by retirements. So even with the pressures and, and changes of, of however the air aviation industry comes out of COVID-19, um, you're, you're going to see significant opportunities due to those individuals, uh, you know, leaving the industry, moving on into retirement. In other sectors globally, uh, much of those, uh, of those positions and the, the 200 plus thousand um, that are in the Pacific Rim and, and, and the Middle East, um, those areas uh, are, are also impacted to some extent by retirements, but much of those uh, new openings that are forecast over the next 20 years are driven almost entirely uh, by growth and, and emerging technology has, has really pushed the aviation industry um, in, into lots of areas that were formerly and previously serviced from, from, from elsewhere. Now they're serviced locally and, and so there'll be wonderful job opportunities in those areas uh, as, as the economy demands that the aviation industry continue to grow in, in those sectors. So um, there's wonderful opportunities. Um, and, and, and I would touch on for a second, some of the opportunities that are being driven by evolving technology. It's a reality today that we're paying very, very close attention um, to greening the aerospace industry. And, and by that, I mean that, that we're paying more and more attention to the environment and, and, how, um, and how the aerospace industry uh, has its own unique uh, impact uh, on, on the environment. So we're looking at new fuels, we're looking at, at new construction technologies, we're looking at, at new operation techniques, and, and we're already moving very quickly. And, and some of the, the world-class aircraft produced by Boeing and Airbus that have moved away from some traditional uh, constructions and moving into very light, um, uh, advanced and composite materials, um, we've changed our construction so that the fuel flow and fuel demands have significantly changed and the actual uh, types of fuels that we, that we consume are, are a lot better for the environment or is less, have less impact on the environment. Um, that's today. As we're moving closely, we already see the, the first companies that are moving into non-traditional propulsion. Um, and by that, I'm specifically referring to electric propulsion. And we're seeing several European companies that have made tremendous inroads. Um, there's a couple of American companies that are doing it. And Diamond Aircraft Manufacturing here, right here in London, is, is, is uh, also experiencing um, you know, significant uh, growth in, in that area. So 
so we're going to see a, a greener industry uh, and, and with that greener industry, the demands will be significant um, for the production of newer, greener, more environment friendly aircraft that will reduce uh, its impact on the environment, but it will also reduce the cost um, to operate uh, globally. So again, wonderful opportunities in the manufacturing sector um, as a result of that shift in technology. Thank you, Larry, for that detailed explanation. Um, th there are questions coming in around, uh, so it's, I, I would say this is a two part question. So one is in your programs, uh, the, the diplomas and the grad cert, could you talk about practical um, uh, component versus like the theoretical component? Uh, like, is there like a rough um, uh, division that you have in your mind for the diplomas and the grad certs? And the second part of the question is the weekly classes, uh, the weekly hour of classes. And I always like telling students, that's just the weekly hour of classes, does not include the effort you have to put in before class and after class. Uh, that also is substantial. So if you can talk about those two things, please. Well, thank you, Saurabh. And, 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 and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to, to talk about this. So one of the, the things that makes the Norton Wolf School um, s such a wonderful place to come and study is that we uh, roughly have a split, whether you're on a one-year certificate a one-year grad cert or whether you're on a two or a three-year diploma program, we're almost evenly split 50-50 between theory and hands-on. We are very, very focused in hands-on uh, experience and, and that's why manufacturers, maintenance, repair and overhaul, uh, aerospace industries uh, in total are very, very eager to see our, our graduates uh, come in and apply for jobs. Um, so building on that 50-50 split, um, pre-COVID-19, and, and, we'll, and I'll come back to our, our reality this year in a minute, we focused on the entire package. We focused on graduating students who hadn't just come to a school, um, sat in a sterile classroom environment, um, and, and then came out the other end with, with, a, uh, with a credential. Our focus was from day one to create it in every student, um, someone who is used to working in a workplace environment. So you would come in on a Monday morning um, and you would spend the entire day in the hangar just as if you were going to work somewhere. So it was a Monday to Friday, uh, six plus hours a day in the hangar um, you know, either in a, in a classroom theory environment or you would be on, on the hangar floor or in one of the labs or simulators. That's by intention. That, you know, would develop in everyone uh, that workplace attitude um, so that they're used to coming in and actually uh, you would after over the two-year period, if it's a two-year diploma, uh, you'd already be uh, used to going in and working a full shift somewhere in industry. So what, how that's going to change this year, um, and, and I, I appreciate you mentioning about the, uh, the ability to do 50% uh, of the work elsewhere. Uh, for us, that's a challenge. Uh, for us, the, all of the online work you, you would have to be here for uh, because you'd be studying the online at home um, and then depending upon on the program, and, and we're still, developing those schedules and, and everyone will have those before they arrive. Um, we envision that you would be studying it online um, and then, you know, coming in potentially, you know, one day online, the next day in doing the hands-on. Um, so it would alternate. So um, because of our modular process, um, we are very focused. You will, you will study the theory of a specific subject and the very next time when you walk into the hangar, that will be reinforced uh, by hands-on in the hangar. And when you master that skill, then you would be exposed online to new information. And then the next time you'd be in the hangar, you would, you would reinforce that information. So it's a, it's a true building block process. Um, and and uh, uh, we're pretty excited 
uh, that we're going to be able to continue that process even with the online delivery. Thanks, Larry. One thing that I did not mention to students earlier is the start date of our, all our programs for fall 2020. Uh, or everyone received an email about this is September 21st now. So the start date has been delayed and that is in part to also give students time for arrival uh, because uh, it, there will be processes, there'll be different processes in place for, for that as well. Um, and as I said to students specifically about your program, you will get emails uh, by May 28th talking about in what format your program will be delivered and uh, like what supports Fanshawe will be able to provide you through our journey. Um, Tracy, there are questions that are coming in around co-op. Um, mm -hmm. So multiple questions that are coming in as well. So could you talk about the process of getting a co-op and the supports the college has in the division and in other areas as well for mm -hmm. the co-op specifically? Absolutely. Well, actually, I was just even going to, um, you know, just provide some additional uh, information from all of the, the great details that Larry had provided. We're really fortunate at the Norton Wolf School of Aviation Technology. We've got a great team of, of staff that are there specifically to support the students. Um, so, you know, as we are uh, all in this new world together with COVID, um, becoming really proficient and uh, truly becoming your best online learner is um, going to be one of our main priorities. And I know, Sarab, you mentioned we'll have some great webinars coming up for online learning, but we also have um, dedicated advisors that are there to, to help you walk through, um, you know, step by step, because we know on a daily basis that, you know, your goal and your priority is your studies and working, um, you know, to get your, um, you know, your studies in place and your diploma. Um, and we're there to really assist you and try to understand your needs. Um, with co-op, as Larry had mentioned, you know, we're really fortunate um, to have the number of co-op offerings um, available to students. Um, so students um, that choose the co-op program will take um, one course in their um, first year and it's provided by um, one of our team members that is a specialist in co-op um, and it's a wonderful course so it's it's one where you can really take your time to concentrate on you um, what are your skills what will you be offering to industry um, and you know let, let's make sure your resume is uh, to the to the level that um, you know, employers will get to see and, and you'll be able to highlight your skills and qualifications. So, um, and the other piece is just preparing you for um, on the site job readiness. Um, so Jennifer Lee is our co-op um, team member within the Norton Wolf School of Aviation and she has a, a wealth of experience assisting students with their co-ops. Um, we know that this is very important. This is a very important component of your learning. Um, we, we know um, all of the reasons and so we're really dedicated to providing that information. So in addition to the course, what the process is that you'll meet individually with the co-op advisor um, to go through the specific opportunities that are available for you in your program. Um, and it's, it's a really good process. I, I find that um, the students, uh, it just really contributes um, to your learning in subsequent semesters when you get a chance to um, take a look at, you know, what exactly are you looking to, to do once you graduate and the co-op helps better than anything. So we're really fortunate with that, Sarab. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, Larry, the next question is around the, uh, the commercial flight program specifically. Uh, and the question is, and I know this is something you're really excited about in the commercial flight program as well. So I think it's a great question. During the commercial flight program, when do students actually start the pilot portion of the program as well? Day one. <laughs> we love this. We had an awful lot of opportunities to look at, at a number of programs. Um, you know, I, I've had the, the wonderful experience of 37 years of in the aviation industry and and, and I'm always excited to, to see people entering the, you know, uh, a new and exciting career in, in, in flight. It always surprised me how many programs you would come in and you would spend upwards of a year uh, in classroom environments before you ever saw the inside of an airplane. Um, so that was, that was core to our experience, um, is that on day one, you're gonna start ground school as part of your, uh, part of your studies. 
And uh, as soon as you have uh, completed the requisite number of hours in the ground school and the subjects, uh, you're gonna be moving into a flying situation. So uh, September the 21st, as, as, as you said, and thank you for reminding us of that, uh, will be our start date. Ideally, uh, you'll be flying uh, no, no later than the end of November. And uh, you know, you'll have had the, your ground school and some, uh, some simulation time by then. So it's, so it's, it's a pretty rapid uh, entry into the world of flying. Fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Larry, for that explanation. Um, I'm just looking for the next question. Um, okay, so I still see questions coming in around the schedule for fall. What will my class schedule look like and all that? And as I said, class schedule would likely not be available May 28, but the mode of delivery and uh, details, more details about your specific program would be available by May 28th at the latest. Uh, and of course, class schedule and things like that would come in before your program starts in. Um, so I have uh, multiple questions. I'm trying to look for... Mm -hmm. uh, so... So there is also a question around international students uh, in the commercial flight program, right? Um, is it like is it more difficult for an international student? Are there additional steps uh, that an international student would have to take for the commercial flight uh, or the pilot license uh, as well, Larry? Um, only the ones that we, that we uh, addressed in, in the presentation about language. Um, if English is not your uh, your first language, it's not your mother tongue, um, uh, you will be required by Transport Canada regulation um, to pass a, uh, a an oral Brit, uh, an oral uh, English. They call it a presentation test, um, and the key is that's for your and and the and other individuals in the aviation industry safety. Um, much of what you're going to do is going to key on the use of the radio. So you're going to be communicating to air traffic control, you're going to be communicating with other aircraft. And the ability to clearly communicate um, both in listening and in transmitting uh, is integral to safe operation of an airplane. So, so that's, that's the first thing um, it, that, that I, I would say um, it, that will present itself as, as as a, as a new opportunity for individuals coming in is that they'll have to strengthen their, their language skills um, so that they can, uh, they, they can work in, in, those, in that sector in the, in, in the aircraft. Um, other than that, uh, aviation is a global industry. So the fact that, uh, that you come from another country, um, not an issue. Uh, we're excited to have uh, you know, domestic and international students coming uh, because that's where the industry is. It's domestically and it's international. So uh, it's an exciting time. Thank you. Awesome. There is a question coming in around part-time work um, as well. So I'll, I'll just uh, deal with that question. So question is for any program or the co-op program uh, as well. Are you allowed to work part-time? So the answer is yes, you're allowed to work part-time, but uh, I always say to students, you have to look at um, your uh, course load, uh, your workload in the course before making a decision about working part-time or not. So you'd be very, very smart if you waited some time and see how your content is going, how well you're able to keep with it, keep up with it, and then take a decision about working part-time or not. I would clarify that you don't need a separate part-time work permit if you're in a post-secondary program. Your study permit inherently is your part-time work permit as well. But if you're in a co-op program or your program has a practical component, work component, any of that, um, uh, like placement component or a work component, you need a co-op work permit. Yeah. So any pro student who's in a co-op program would need a co-op work permit as well. And uh, you are able to generally get this while you arrive within the country. Uh, and um, if not, uh, we have immigration advisors in the International Center as well, who can provide you guidance on how to do this. Um, so I'm looking for next question um, around this as well. So 
the co-op, and I, I think you mentioned this, uh, Larry, in the presentation as well, but are the co-op optionals uh, in, in uh, uh, the aviation programs or are, are they mandatory? We like to think that, that it is optional. Um, we used to have co-op and non-co-op programs um, and, and we got rid of our non-co-op programs because they were so popular, the co-op was so popular. Um, but it really is up, up to the individual when they come in as, as to how much that they can, uh, they can get out of those co-op programs. Uh, we, we highly recommend them because they are terrific opportunities and they give you great career exposures. So, um, so although they're co they are co-op programs, if, the, if a student elects not to participate, uh, that's 100% that's up to that individual. All right, fantastic. Um, so there are questions coming in uh, around, um, yeah, the questions coming in for uh, fall 2020 and the program fees as well. If the program fees are different uh, because the programs would be online slash bland, blended format. Uh, and I'd just like to clarify the quality of the content that is being offered to your professors. None of that is different. So the fee is absolutely not different than a regular Fanshawe College program uh, that is being offered to you. So I just wanted to clarify that as well. Um, okay, uh, there are, again, there are many international specific questions as well that I'm seeing. The questions are about visa applications and what will happen because the visas uh, in some countries are not being processed right now. Uh, great thing is Canada has an online visa application process. Um, uh, and uh, you should utilize that. I do understand biometrics and medical um, centers are not open in many countries, but the plan is to open them gradually across uh, the world as well. And uh, so the Canadian immigration is making plans around that, uh, but you, you can start that process right away by doing an online application. And I also saw comments by students who said uh, they've applied already, but they're still waiting for a result. Of course, the last two months, there have been significant delays on that. But if you've applied, as soon as the visa offices open up, you would be the first ones to get uh, a response uh, from that. So plan for, for uh, your visa application as uh, soon as possible. Uh, I'm trying to uh, scout any other academic questions uh, that are there. Uh, there are a lot of questions, of course, about the fall and how fall will be. And as I've clarified, May 28th, is when the programs, program details would uh, would be available, what programs are happening in, in what format. And Larry did clarify to an extent that aviation programs, the kind of format approximately he's looking at. It might be different for every program again, uh, but we'd be able to clarify that by May 28th through emails to all the students. So give me a minute while I look at um, uh, the questions related to academic. Um, mm -hmm. There are multiple questions, but all, they're all on the same uh, topic uh, that I think we've all already covered on these areas. Yeah, okay. Okay, so the question is around um, what would be the difference between taking flying lessons from a fright school and taking it in a college slash university? One thing that I'd say before, I, I know Larry, you'd want to jump in as well, but one thing I'll say is uh, the, the program is not the same as just a flight training program. So there is a flight training program, but there is the Fanshawe three-year advanced diploma as well. And Larry can talk about what is the value of that. I can talk about uh, that for the postgraduate work permit. Uh, our program is what makes you eligible for the postgraduate work permit. Uh, pilot training program does not make you eligible for a postgraduate work permit. So apart from that, in terms of the content of the commercial flight plus pilot program, uh, Larry, if you wanted to talk. Thanks, Rob. And, and your point is, is, is outstanding. It, it, by coming to us, um, it opens the door for you to have that postgraduate uh, work experience. And, and, and that's, that's the first thing. The next thing that I'd really like to impress upon people is that if you were to, to, to pursue a commercial or professional pilot's license um, through uh, a, a flight school, um, 
it's not going to be achieved within three years. Um, you're not going to gain the benefit of, uh, you know, of very high tech modern aircraft that are maintained to the highest standard, you know, at the, at the factory level. Uh, you won't have opportunities um, to do all of the, at, at every flight school, they don't have the opportunities to do all of the very highest end uh, of the, you know, the 750 hours of ground school that we're going to give you over the three years that, that you will, where you'll get a private pilot's license, you'll get uh, multi-engine, you'll get uh, night endorsements, you'll, you'll receive training on, on the glass cockpit uh, technology, you'll receive all of the commercial uh, requirements that will prepare you um, to write at that uh, air transport pilot's license, uh, which is critical uh, for you to be able to move on into the, into the commercial sector. So this is, is a one-stop package uh, where you would have to shop that around if you went through um, and, and decided to go to a, you know, a, an individual flight school, as it were. But add to that, uh, we think the exciting thing about careers in aviation uh, transcend the cockpit. Um, you know, airports require managers and operations personnel. Uh, aviation industries, uh, uh, you know, require management and, and, and people to run the, the companies themselves. And so it, it's, it's our desire to, to, to provide an education to all of the entrants into the aviation industry through our three-year advanced diploma to provide them you know, the skills that would, would uh, pr provide them a full and balanced career beyond just a cockpit operation. Um, and, and that's what we're going to give you. Um, and, and that's what industry is, is overjoyed uh, about what it is that we're offering. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Larry. Uh, so we'll take last uh, couple of questions. Uh, there is a question about the age of retirement that ordinary av avionic technicians are at. Uh, so are there age of retirements within the industry that are there, Larry? Not uh, for the technicians. Um, and, and you'll see people from all ages working as, as, uh, as technicians. Um, but what I would also say uh, that as you acquire experience and, and more qualifications, because that's in particular in the technician side of the house, um, you receive endorsements. So you would start out, you know, working on specific aircraft and then over a period of years you you acquire significant more experience and endorsements on other uh, aircraft type. Um, that experience and those endorsements uh, opens doors um, to to move into supervisory roles um, and, and to take you know increasing amounts of, of uh, responsibility uh, both in the maintenance repair and overhaul um, and in the aviation sector um, for the for the airline carriers. So uh, you, you'll see uh, great opportunities for people to uh, to have new and challenging career opportunities uh, throughout the sector. Um, and 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 of course, for us, uh, we love to see people as as they as they grow and 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 gain experience, because then I look for you to come back and become you know a highly qualified, highly motivated. Uh, professor to come and teach others so that we can perpetuate those skill sets uh, in new generations of, of aviation professionals. Thank you, Larry. Uh, there is a, a question coming in about the work permit eligibility. Uh, so uh, the person who's asked this question has said one year diploma courses, do they still qualify for a postgraduate work permit? Uh, just a point of clarification, diploma by default are always two years or more. Uh, postgraduate certificate, uh, postgraduate, so graduate certificate or certificates, which are one year, um, still qualify for a postgraduate work permit. If you study for one year, you get up to one year work permit. If you study for two years, you get up to three years work permit. So most of our graduate certificates program students, for example, applied aerospace manufacturing students. Um, uh, I, I, Larry, I think uh, briefly we spoke about uh, the, the composite materials program as well for next fall. So that could be another, uh, could be a second program that students with aerospace manufacturing would look at. So that combination qualifies for you for up to three years postgraduate work permit. So uh, th this question, uh, and it's a question that everyone is thinking, Larry, 
is uh, apart from the the program and how it is delivered uh, the industry you, the industry was doing really well amazing demand uh, how how do you think and with your kind of rich experience in the industry how do you think larry this would change the industry would this change the demand would like how would things be different in the aviation aircraft industry uh, going forward well that's that's a great question um, and, and and what i would offer is, is that this is my opinion only uh, based on my experience the aviation and the aerospace industry globally um, it has been so strong for so long and has recovered from some significant pressures. Post 9-11, you know, flying was grounded. Um, we had a long period of time where there, was, there were no flights anywhere. Um, post 2008 major economic meltdown, um, we had huge pressures on the aviation industry um, and it recovered. Uh, you know, we've seen this on a number of occasions uh, due to global, you know, conflict and strife and, and the aviation industry comes back. And, and if you look at it, the reason being um, is, is that the global economy is, is more and more um, interrelated uh, by, by nation and by region. Um, and, and so it, it's not just the the fact that that uh you know people love to travel and, and tourism um but we're a globally diverse population um you know i have family in europe and and, and family in england and i have you know friends and family ar around the world um so that's the same and, and and that's that's common uh amongst almost everyone that i know um and so people are are, are traveling in, in that way now, COVID is going to clearly have some implications on that in the short term, uh, but the, the, the travel industry uh, is, is, is large um, and, and the, the desire for people to, to move globally is not going to go away. People are still going to, you know, uh, ha aspire to, to, uh, to travel for new oppor opportunities, uh, career opportunities and work, but they're also going to want to uh, you know, maintain contact with family and friends wherever they may be. So that's the one side of it. Um, the, and the industry is very creative. So if you're, if you're looking online, uh, you're going to see all kinds of folks who are, are offering up suggestions about how new seating things and, and new hygiene protocols and new security protocols and all of that. What it's going to look like, uh, I would offer it's going to look different than it did pre-COVID-19. Um, but there's a solution coming. Uh, the, the aviation industry will continue. I'd say add to that the, 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 the fact that we're going to, uh, uh, you know, it's not going to stop the, the air transport industry of, of moving air freight. Um, that's a huge and, and, and very, very strong industry. Um, and and it, it demands a, an awful lot of support. So uh, the movement of air freight um, has fewer complications due to COVID-19, um, but, but it will, you know, it'll be certainly affected to some extent. Um, uh, and that's not going to change with technology. We can have all the Zoom and Bongo and Skype and face-to-face -face you want, uh, but the movement of material is going to continue. Um, and, and in particular in the high-tech industry for just-in-time delivery. So there's, it's, it's, that's going to bounce back and, and we're going to see uh, continued strength. Will there be an interruption? Absolutely. Uh, but uh, we've had interruptions before and come back every time stronger um, than pre-interruption. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Larry. I think that's a question everyone was thinking. Uh, and uh, John Yang from our team did ask that question because I think a lot of uh, students are thinking that as well. Um, so uh, uh, that's uh, it with us. I, I, there are still questions, but uh, I think that's it in terms of the question that we've covered the length and breadth of the questions as well. Um, uh, Larry, Tracy, thank you so much for delivering this session to our students. If you have any final advice uh, or comments for our students, please, I'll, I'll leave the floor open to you. 
Well, maybe I'll, I'll uh, just have a couple of last words and then I'll leave uh, the final um, statements to uh, our wonderful Associate Dean Larry Weir. Um, just, just again, a, another sincere thank you for your time today in um, coming to learn more about the Norton Wolf School of Aviation Technology at Fanshawe College. Um, it truly is an honor um, to be a part of this team and, and I have felt this for, for the many years that I've been you know, with this school and um, I think that all of your questions have been so valid and just shows your, your true diligence and, and desire to learn um, a career that will take you um, into um, a job, a placement that you know, allows you to find fulfillment and to work on programs that are your passion. And um, we, um, we really work at Fanshawe College to consider all of your needs, all of the um, requirements. Um, it's the full breadth. So it's your career, it's your wellness while you're at um, while you're at college, um, your ability to adapt to the changing technologies um, and, and changes within the industry. So we just work with you so closely. Um, we care so much um, and um, that, that's you know, really an important part. So thank you again. It's been an honor to, to get to speak and share with, with many of you today. And thank you very much, Sarab. Thank you, Tracy. Um, and thank you, Sarab. Um, before uh, I, I wrap up my, my comments, um, I would also like to acknowledge uh, one of the unseen or uh, members of our, our board today in, in Gabriel Escalante. Gabriel um, has been a wonderful supporter of our program and he's the man behind the scene today who has been running our slides and, and in fact actually produced the slides today. So thank you very much, Gabriel. Uh, we, we, uh, we appreciate your help. Thank you for the compliments uh, and thank you everyone for joining today uh, to the session. I hope you had a lot of information answered and uh, we hope to see you in fall. Thanks, Gabriel. So uh, thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Sarab. And, and uh, you know, what I would like to do is, is just sort of echo the comments from, from Sarab and Tracy. Aviation industry, um, all of us who, who are in the school and, and, and have been particularly blessed to have had a career in, in the aviation sector, um, our goal is, is to really share and, and introduce a whole new generation uh, of individuals into this, this wonderful, exciting, and dynamic industry. The, the aviation industry, it, it's always a surprise because it evolves so rapidly. Uh, the opportunities are, are beyond belief. When you come in, you will have a vision of where you're going to take your, uh, your, your new skills and, and where you're going to be employed. The reality is, uh, as you get farther and farther into the industry, you're going to uh, experience new and exciting opportunities that you'll have never, ever, ever conceived of. That's the great joy that we have at the Norton Wolf School of Aviation Technology. Uh, which is e as equally true uh, across Fanshawe College. We uh, take great pride um, in, in bringing students in uh, and exposing them to, to wonderful new opportunities um, through the pursuit of education uh, in, in, a, in a very practical, hands-on fashion and introducing them to sectors of, of industries that are just keenly and, and eagerly anticipating your arrival. So, uh, so I, I'm, I'm very, very, uh, I feel very, very fortunate to have had the opportunity uh, to share this panel today with, with Tracy and Sarab and, and Gabriel um, and to have the opportunity to talk to you all. Um, and, and regardless of the format, uh, you know, the hybrid format that we've talked about today, um, I, I look forward to welcoming you all in person um, because the aviation industry uh, is about people. And, and, and as much as the study is, is, about, is, is about technologies, um, it's still all about the people and, and, the, uh, and the joy of, of working with, with like-minded professionals. So uh, with that, uh, I'll turn it over to you, Sarab. I thank you very much for, for your support um, and look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you, uh, Larry. Thank you, Tracy. Students, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we have a lot of the answers, not all, so thank you for your patience uh, during uh, this, um, this new reality. 
Uh, and as I said, Fansha has committed to communicate with you your program program specific plans for fall 2020 by September 20. Uh, sorry, by May 28th. Um, and the program starts September 21st, 2020. There are a couple of programs which have been suspended, um, and those students have received specific emails. But all the programs that we did speak about have a plan for fall 2020. The plan will be shared with you by May 28th. Thank you so much for choosing Fansha. Thank you for choosing Norton Rules School of Aviation Technology. Um, thank you. Have a great day. We look forward to welcoming you at Fansha. Thank you.